Staff at Tower Hospital told the Eastern Cape Health MEC's office that 25 patients had died in a period of four years, when in fact the number was closer to 70. Health E! News now reports on what appears to have been a cover-up. Sango Jakatiana is just one of many who died mysteriously at Tower Hospital in Fort Beaufort, a 400-bed facility. In March, a psychiatrist blew the whistle on alleged abuses there. A psychiatrist couldn't keep quiet anymore about the events of that place, of the things that are happening there. And I, I mentioned this to my family, but because we don't have a choice, you know, we, we couldn't do, because if, if we had resources, we could have taken him out there. Dr. Kiran Sukeri spent two years as the sole psychiatrist at Tower. He resigned in March. This institution functioned without a psychiatrist for decades. During his time there, he says many patients died. He couldn't work out the official number because, he says, the death register wasn't accurate. There are two death registers. So, and according to, to the report that was released by the South African Society of Psychiatrists, they don't actually speak to each other. So we don't know um, the exact number. So, you know, certain, the one death register doesn't have the same names as the other death register. Tower Hospital reported to the office of the Eastern Cape Health MEC that 25 patients had died between January 2013 and December 2017. There was a specific number of deaths that had been reported uh, formally to our MSC for Health. And when we looked at the evidence that they had in Tower recording um, the number of deaths, there was just no correlation between the numbers. Professor Zukiswa Zingela is the Eastern Cape Chair of the Society of Psychiatrists. She says the mysterious appearance of a second register revealed that the death toll at Tower between 2013 and 2017 was actually 65. It appeared there'd been a cover-up. The logical thing would be to say, if you've lost your death register, that's what you would say. You would say, I'm sorry, MSC, I can't give you the numbers now because I've lost my death register. I will see if I can find this information in another way. That's not how it was handled. Instead, a specific number was given, which was based on unreliable sources. They had insinuated that the death register was stolen by the person that has made all these allegations, meaning that I had stolen the death register. <laughs> it's interesting. I don't know what the investigation says. The, the register got lost. Statistics was given. Information got leaked to the media. The health department, Siswe Kupelo, says someone stole the register, Hello? then returned it. It's clear he believes it to be Dr. Sukeri. Mysteriously or miraculously, the, 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 the report, the, 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 the book in question was found on the desk. I mean, that really didn't make sense. So the figure remains a mystery. Everything is handwritten and then submitted to the head office, to the head nurse's office. So you have all these written submissions that are then have to be recorded. And they're not recorded ele electronically either in the head nurse's office. They're recorded by hand. The handwritten death register makes it hard to work out what the real figure is. The number of deaths is very high. This former staff member gave us information about what goes on at Tower, provided we didn't reveal his identity. On the weekends, there is no doctor inside the institution. So nurses are using their own discretion. There was a death of a patient on a weekend and the patient was found dead on hospital grounds. Where the patient died in, during the course of the weekend, the doctor was not there. But no investigation was instituted. Dr. Sukeri believes the deaths at Tower were due to understaffing and a lack of medical care. The life expectancy of psychiatric patients is greatly reduced because of the high incidence of medical comorbidities. You've got to think about cardiorespiratory conditions. You've got to think about TB. You've got to think about HIV. 
And, and this is why you develop admission guidelines, because you want your colleagues to understand that you cannot send patients with those kinds of conditions that are not stable to this institution, because there's no access to that special care. These old buildings housed Tower Hospital 120 years ago. When the institution started in 1894, they kept very, very good records. Um, and they kept records of, of all the deaths. And they were mainly cardiorespiratory and TB. That's 1894. We're now talking 2018. Of course, there's no money. Uh, health is underfunded. But that is not an excuse not to do what needs to be done. People have to, they've got to be innovative. They've got to be visionary and get things done. Families think little was done to prevent deaths at Tower Hospital. Where do you go? Because you, get, you report government at the police station and still a government institution. Where do you go? In January this year, four more patients died. It was part of a series of events that brought Dr. Sukeri to a tipping point. You become concerned that you are having so many deaths in such a short period of time. And your con my concerns were about um, what are we missing in terms of patient care? He says the facility didn't provide proper nutrition for diabetic and hypertensive patients. Salty pilchard soup featured twice a day on the menu. So you'd have these bags of brown soup powder mixed with tins of pilchards or mixed vegetables in certain days, which have a high sodium content, which is given to patients. The kind of food they are eating, even dogs cannot, 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 cannot be fed by that. Meals were transported to the wards in the back of this van. The baki would stop at the ward, hoot, um, it, patients would walk out of the ward, offload the food onto a cement slab outside the ward in, um, in Bain-Marie dishes. So there's no heating facility. And then other patients and staff would then dish the food for patients. So the food arrived cold. When we visited Tower with local politicians after Dr. Sukeri had blown the whistle, staff said they were now following provincial nutrition guidelines. Dr. Sukeri and other staff believe the former CEO was at the center of the crisis at Tower. Ntombi Zandili Ngume had been a nurse there since 1983. She resigned a fortnight ago. I remember the one time when a patient complained about the food or the clothes, uh, you know, was recording it in the patient's file. And somebody in the MDT who had been at the institution for a long time said to me, what are you doing? I said, I'm making notes. And they said, well, but you can't make these notes. I said, but why not? Because the patient has the right to complain. And then I realized that at that institution, patients were voiceless. The former CEO even banned a staff WhatsApp group and a multidisciplinary patient care team. There's a very high level of paranoia, a very high level. It's very well systematized. It's almost delusional in my opinion. The CEO wants to make the decisions. The CEO wants to tell the doctors what not and what to do. He's controlling that institution as if it, it is his yard of farm. When we return, the horrors of the seclusion rooms. A sane person would go insane being in that space.